one of our favorite things to do on a Monday, and it's easy to do when it comes to the Packers roster. Time now for Need It or Don't Need It, presented by Fleet Farm. Need it? I guess you're just what I need. That's what I need. It. Or Don't Need It, presented by Fleet Farm. Remember, if Fleet Farm doesn't have it, then you don't need it. Fleet Farm, serving the Midwest since 1955. Need it or don't need it, inspired by the rookie orientation minicamp taking place over the weekend up in Green Bay. First up for the Green Bay Packers in need it or don't need it, presented by Fleet Farm. The Packers will need rookie wide receiver Jaden Reed of Michigan State to be wide receiver three for the majority of this season to see success the way they wanted on offense. Cows uh, need it or don't need it? I don't think you need it because I also think everybody's excited about old boy from Virginia. Dontavian Wicks. I, I saw all kinds of reports about how he looked last weekend, too, at the rookies with the rookies. But one of those two guys needs to be wide receiver three. I don't know. You know everybody's excited also about Samari Toure and I saw somebody report, you know, that every time LaFleur gets a chance, he compliments and raves about Samari Toure. So I don't think you need Jaden Reed to be that guy. I hope. I think we all hope that he can be. And we saw what he did against the Wisconsin Badgers, basically mm-hmm. just Randy Moss and saying, I'll, I'll just take this over. Don't sweat it, y'all. And Wisconsin had no answers for him. That's what you hope for. And if that's the case... He'll be wide receiver two, not wide receiver three. And that would even be, I'd be fine with that. Because right now what you have is a collection of young players that are going to be pushed. They're going to be pushed because they all want to get out on the field. They all have to find their role. Christian Watson and Dobbs both come in with a huge lead. Doesn't mean these young guys can't catch them. And then there's a hamstring. Oh, my hammy. I'm out two weeks. Hey, Bye-bye. I'm going to fly past you. Better get your butt back out there. That's that competition culture that Matt LaFleur, I think, has wanted for a while. Well, you know what? He's got it. All right. I don't want to bellyache, but the not watching 11-on-11s that goes on during the season extended to the rookie camp. So none of us got to see them go 11 on 11. So any judgments you've seen from anyone, uh, including me if I make any, which I'll hedge a little bit coming up next, um, not a whole heck of a lot of value, right? We saw them in drills. We saw them uh, running routes. We saw some special teams. But we didn't, I mean, and I wasn't there on Friday. I was there for Saturday's practice, but it was the same deal. Nothing during 11 on 11, which is when, as you well know, Tausch, position guys especially, if not linemen, get the flash. You make a big play down the field, everyone knows. So if it was Reed or Wicks or somebody else, we didn't get to see that. So no one's raving about what what a big play was made at the wide receiver or the tight end position. Now, Uh, is it true? I I did hear, again, this is through Twitter, does Matt LaFleur go out of his way to compliment Samari Torre every time he can? Uh, so what I think he is doing, this is my interpretation. I don't I'm, I don't know who said that or thinks that. They are entitled to their it's somebody on Packers Twitter. I don't remember who. But. Um, I think he's making sure that the other rookie does not get forgotten in the conversation from last year. Because everyone always asks about Watson and Dobbs. In fact, he answered a question about Watson and Dobbs at the NFL meetings and didn't mention Samari Toure. Uh, I think he's probably making okay. sure that he's not left out, which is what a coach should do. And kudos he to him should. for doing and, it. And typically that also means that Samari Toure is showing some things at least in enough individual to be mentioned. workouts and things. Right. No exactly. doubt. Exactly. But I don't right. think it's – he's so excited that he's just shoehorning him into the conversation. I don't All think All right, it's that. so if you're judging off of last year and you gave really good insight – Saw 11 on 11 last Dobbs. year, I might add. You 
Oh, really? So you're not going to even give us an answer as far as any of these guys, Dobbs or Watson-esque from what you saw last year, any, or is it apples to oranges? Well, none of their uh, young receivers are wiry or spindly. Like, even Wicks has some uh, has some strength. And, I, I, again, when I said that about Christian Watson, that doesn't mean that's what Christian Watson will look like two years from now or even this coming season. Like, I haven't seen him in person yet this year. I'm guessing that he will look differently to us than he did a year ago. He had a year in a weight room. He had a year of Adam Corzin's nutrition program. A year in a weight room. He's working with Adam Corson for a while. He's doing this. By the, He's by the way, bigger. He's getting uh, stronger. If, if you go on Twitter, there were a lot of people who would agree with you that I tend to accent the last syllable that I say, uh, including Paula. Uh, if you missed that, I do believe we have a post somewhere on social media of Tausch imitating me how I finish up my sentences. He's gotten stronger. He worked out hard this offseason. He's doing a great job. Uh, yeah, it's got to be Wicks or Reed. doesn't have to be both, but I don't think they're going <laughs> – if they get a veteran wide receiver who is who has achieved 30. his 30th birthday, I will be shocked. Next. Need it or don't need it? Next up, a veteran backup quarterback with starting experience needs to be the backup to Jordan Love on game days this season, not rookie Sean Clifford. Need it or don't need it, Tash? Don't need it. I think the Packers have made their uh, position very clear as far as what they're expecting this season. Uh, you're not going to bring Mercedes Lewis back. I don't need to see an old washed Matt Ryan. Let's see Sean Clifford. Let's see old Etling. Let's take a look and see how that goes. Now, if something happens to Jordan Lover, he's going to miss some time in the beginning of the season. Then I'm not opposed to it, but... As I said before the draft, I'm not interested in a first or second or third round quarterback drafted. I want this to be crystal clear. Jordan, you're going to go through ups and downs. We're not going to look to see Matty Ice over on the sideline to save us versus the Tennessee Titans. You're going to go win it or lose it. We're giving this. This is your operation. Let's see it. And I just don't think, I don't know what value a Matty Ice or a Ryan Tannehill or any of these older veterans are going to bring. If you are going as young as you are, I don't need a 38-year-old quarterback to come in. I just don't. Uh, Tausch is right about the Packers mentality. I am I am all in on Matt Ryan. I'm not going to cede my position on that at all. Uh, I think he could help Jordan Love as a first-year starter immensely without even playing a snap. I think there's value in that. Not that uh, Tom Clements isn't an outstanding guy to have as your quarterback's coach, but Matt Ryan has played the position in games, in the biggest games possible, in the NFL. He's won a Super Bowl. He is not a guy you want to be your starter this season. But Sean Clifford is a guy you don't want to be your starter this season either. I don't care what Brock Purdy did last year. And so, yes, I am all in on Matt Ryan, but guess what? I don't make those decisions at 1265 Lombardi Avenue. I think they are dead set on Etling and Clifford. And that's going to be there. The, and, and again, if you want to argue about rebuilding, if you are willing to have a rookie fifth-round pick as your primary backup to a first-year starter, I'm not sure how confident you are that you have a team that if Jordan Love gets hurt and you had somebody who could get you through four games would be a contender still for the playoffs, that doesn't send exactly the message of, well, we got a really good team here, so if we lose our quarterback, we better have somebody who's played in the league and can get us through that stretch. That is not what they appear to want to do which, again, goes back to the recombobulation conversation. Need it or don't need it? Got a late final entry here for need it or don't need it. A very obscure one out of nowhere. Uh, need it or don't need it, Mark Murphy needs to consider changing the name of Titletown to Lambo Land. 
Taos I got to admit. Where I, the heck did that come from and need it or don't so need it? So, Jason, who was the rookie that was quoted? I think it was one of the tight ends. When they were asking him about Green Bay, he said, I went checked out Lambeau Land. Was that Tucker Craft? Which rookie was it that did that? Um, I don't know. It it was I don't think it was Luke Musgrave because I talked at length with Luke Musgrave, uh, wearing an Oregon sweatshirt. Um, I did not hear Luke Musgrave make that reference, so I'm going to guess it was Tucker Craft. I think it was Jesse's efforting on researching that, but I heard it, and I love it. Title Town is Green Bay. The Title Town District is cute. It's fun. Sledding hills and startups and apartments and houses and everything else. Lambo Land reminds me of Lego Land. And you want to get people over there tubing and running forties and having fun ice skating and sitting at the fire and having s'mores and you want it to feel festive and fun. What is a more fun word? Lambo land or title town? What is a more fun word? Rebuilding or recombul- recombobulating? Are, I would really say Lambo land brings more kids and has more fun than title town. I do. From Adriana Torres of WBAY in Green Bay, it is uh, Luke Musgrave who oh. described it as Lambo land. So Not Jason what I was had there. all that talk. You didn't even bring it up. You didn't bring it up with him. Probably the most interesting thing he said all weekend. That would be my guess. I haven't seen I the would, State uh, Journal article yet. Yeah, I haven't written it yet. There were a lot of stories to be written, uh, including a very interesting one uh, on your guy, the first round pick, Lucas Van Ness, uh, who I do I do recall you saying to Aaron Campman uh, that you would like. Max to be the next Lucas Van Ness, play hockey for most of his life, and then become a football player. Uh, that is not addressed in the story because I double dipped, as you predicted, and used a lot of Aaron Campman's conversation with us. For so, that are story. you poo pooing this Lambo land or what? Uh, you know, you're not even like totally. You totally. hate it. Yeah, you're 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 doing the same thing that people are doing to the roster. You think by changing the name of Title Town, it's going to change how many people come to it? That's really what you think. Put it in mean, a so you make think, it Lambo Land. Just Heck wait yeah. a second. So you think Walt's World would be as popular as Disneyland? Walt's no. World? All right, first Walt's of all. Walt's World is basically had, Title Town. First of all. Cartoonville. Had, uh, Wally yeah. World was a great place, though. I think John Candy was working was the door. Yeah, it's um, fictional. You're saying that because the branding is set for Disneyland and... I'm saying what I'm saying because the title town branding is set. They got the sign and everything else. I don't think it would oh, change if you called it Lambo. It's Land. not that hard. It's not that hard. First off, Lambo is the iconic name. You own Lambo. You own that moniker. The sign you own outside of City Hall in Green Bay says Title Town USA. That's great. Lambo Land is right next to Lambo. They also Lambo own Land the is like Lego town. Land. It is more, it is more entertainment and fun than Title Town is. Yep. It is. Very Are you so. more likely to go to gr- come to Green Bay on a f- vacation if it was called Lambo Land or if it's called Title Town? Jesse, you go and yeah, Lambo that. Land's Lambo gonna bring Land. more people in. Yep. Hey, I want to go to Lambo. Nobody says, "Hey, I want to go to Title Town." Nobody says it. I want to go see Lambo. I want to get to a game at Lambo. You know what? And that, you know what's adjacent to it? Lambo Land. They got Ferris wheels and ice skating rinks they and tubing have, hills. They don't have a Ferris. They wheel. might get one if they call it Lambo Land. They'll probably get, get a, a Ferris wheel. Ferris wheel, a little train that goes around <laughs> slow and you drops could, yes. you off. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. You could get. You could get a, a train that goes <laughs> underneath the road, mm-hmm. so you don't have to have all that discombobulation yep. with traffic exactly. for game days. Exactly. Yep. We're onto something here. Listen, they're going to have another big project they have to do. You know they're going to have to have another big project. Lambo Land is better than Title Town when it comes to entertainment. Lambo Land. What this kid fell into something. Somebody should get that trade. I don't know who's got it, but that would be something smart. I think Green Bay will think about this. I bet they're thinking, "Boy, this son of a gun. 
we're going to get Musgrave to be an intern for our marketing team. You know the uh, the music they play, like when you walk into Disneyland, you can have that, but it's like all the NFL films music when you're walking in. Polka music, all the, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Jason, you're telling me, you tell your kids, hey, kids, you got an option here. We're going to Title Town. Or we're going to Lambo Land. Your kids are going to say, "Yeah, I'd love to go to Title Town." Instead of saying, "Oh, Lambo Land, what kind of entertainment do they have? Oh, they have sledding and tubing and all this. Oh, I want to go there. Or I want to go look at a bunch of startups and stuff like that." I, I think it's a different deal. Mm-hmm. I do. Right, but once you get them there, and there's no Ferris wheel, and there's no carousel with all these players. In, instead of riding horses, you ride guys that are down in three-point stances and you sit on their backs. Yeah, now you're getting it. Yeah. But when you get there and none of that stuff is there, they're like, Dad, what are we doing here? Can we go into the U.S. Venture Building and see one of the conference centers? Like, you know what, what they should do there, too, is put a fishing pond. Somewhere in that area, they should put a fishing <laughs> pond. It's definitely got more of an Epcot vibe than, you know, uh, Magic Kingdom, but it is what it is. Let's go check out the Associated Bank branch. Kids, come on in. Now you're being ridiculous. <laughs> those, are the, those are the attractions currently at renamed Lambo Land. They're going to have to add a lot of stuff to turn it into the f- – the theme park that you have envisioned. Uh, I don't know if Fleet Farm is considering its own attractions, but their store and their bargains are attraction enough. And right now, Fleet Farm is your lawn and garden headquarters shop. Top brands in lawnmowers. I know somebody who could use some help with his. String trimmers, fertilizer, and grass seed. And get your grass looking great for summer. You can find deals and more online at fleetfarm.com. And don't forget while you're there, Sign up for Fleet Rewards. You get 